Hello everyone. So I'm Alicia. So today I'll be talking about my journey with Fedora on this great occasion of Fedora Women's Day 2020. So let's jump right in. So in my presentation today, I'll be sharing that uh, how I became involved with Fedora, how and what I contributed to in Fedora, what challenges did I face, my takeaways, and a wrap. So let's begin. Uh, my journey with Fedora actually started two years back. Now I was in my fourth semester when I was in, like, I had to do some internship work for after fourth semester in the summer. So actually my college, which is College of Engineering and Technology, which is in Bhumeshwar, Odisha, is not quite supportive at all. They don't allow an official internship from college. So we had to look for work from home op uh, options. Uh, I had very less options at that time. Uh, so I was figuring out where I should apply. Like uh, back then, I got introduced to Outreach Google Summer of Code. Uh, then uh, one of my seniors actually jumped in I, and asked me that I should contribute and work in Outreach because previous. The year back then, she was actually, uh, she actually got an internship at Outreachy, and she gave me some tips and tricks that I should work to get in to get that prestigious internship. So, uh, I worked hard and got into Outreachy. Yeah, so my college was not so supportive at all. Then uh, I jumped into Outreach. Now, there were a lot of options available at that point of time. We had a lot many organization. And it was a chaotic moment for me because you know, when there are a lot of options available, you don't know. You're not sure that which options you should go for, which one is the best option. Talking to a different organization, uh, one of my other seniors actually suggested that I should work in Fedora. So uh, I started. Uh, seeing different uh, projects that were available at that point of time. And also along with Fedora, I looked into other organizations like Mozilla. But at that time, my college was pretty strict. You know, we had like 75% of attendance and with the bare minimum percentage of attendance that I had to have at that time, along with hustling back and then from college to school, it was very tedious for me to you know, consistently code and uh, uh, contribute to different projects at, for, the, uh, for the initial application. So I took a moment back and I thought that um, instead of working into different organization, maybe it's time I should stick with one. I have been working on different issues in different organization, but at that time I got great feedback from mentors from Fedora. And also they were quite supportive and the feedback was quite fast. So I thought, why not give it a try to Fedora? And also I have so many familiar acquaintances that could help me out with the entire process. That's when I got introduced to Fedora. Now this is the journey that uh, I came across to where I got introduced to Fedora. Now, let's begin that. What are the stuff that I uh, did during my entire journey? Now, what are the things that I contributed? Now, of course, I told you that my journey actually officially started from Outreach. Uh, the project that I was working into was Fedora Happiness Packet, which was a very close project, like close to my heart project, because, you know, the aim, what are the objectives of the project is what I have believed since my childhood. I have always been supportive of others. I like to push back people to be the best version of themselves. So the total idea was like it was meant for me. But before I jump right in into the total scenario, let me share you a small story. So when I was like uh, contributing to Fedora, Fedora happiness packet in specific, and there are a lot many competitors and like everyone was so 
passionate about contributing i was like oh my god i am not able to crack it like there were people that had very good knowledge about the stack and the stack was not that familiar with me so i was not so i was like i will not get into and uh, at that point the competition was so high that uh, whenever an issue will come like every people will just rush back then and comment that they want the issue to be claimed so there was a lot of competitions and i was not sure that i'll be able to solve because that was a process that we have to learn during the issue as well so uh, i actually claimed an issue which i had no idea about like how to solve it the total stack was unknown to me and it took a huge amount of uh, courage for me to actually solve that because at that point with lot of competition i was nearly in a point that i will be i'll not able to do that and it was quite discouraging for me so uh what happened that uh, i consistently tried like tried to learn research because it demanded a lot of work i had to work into different projects that were not related to fhp but fedora projects i had to go into into details of this project let uh, know that what is happening in back end and have to implement in the project so it was quite a task for me it took me around few weeks to complete that and uh, by the end of the like, third or fourth week when i was complete i completed the task i said uh, okay i have done a good job but i am quite sure that i am not able to crack this intention because you know other people there were people out there who have solved nearly 10 to 15 issues and me at a score of 2 to 3 it was like an impossible deal for me so i had my hopes like a little bit on but as not quite confident that i'll get the part so like it was very unsure until the result came out and i got it and after when the internship started i asked my mentor justin that justin uh, why like there were a lot many competitors like why i got it so to reply like it was an astonishing reply hear me out he said that uh, you know there were not the factors that the mentors were looking for was not the number of issues that students have claimed it is like with what compassion you have contributed with what much consistency and he also knew that it was quite difficult for me to contribute because i was not at all familiar with the stack nor i was a uh, very professional in all of those and i what i showed at that time was consistency and they clearly they clearly viewed it and i guess i was kind of lucky a supportive mentor that i finally got the part so uh, after outreach happened these are some of the works that i contributed during my outreach internship uh, the major issues were testing i did some ui ux uh, work i also integrated a new user search functionality which was one of those major deals during my uh, application period that i just talked into now these are the some of the areas that i contributed but it was not at all but it was not limited to this i had a lot more coming in and and, and i had no idea about after outreach got completed uh, i was invited to flock can you imagine like me being a girl who has never went outside my city alone i was going through a time where i will be traveling internationally and that to alone it was quite a surprise like i never expected my parents to agree because they never allowed me to go out of house because that's quite common in india for all the women in india they know that how it is but when they heard about that i got such an opportunity they they did not want to be the ones who would uh, not allow their daughter when she has lot to learn and lot to explore so i'm pretty thankful to my parents for allowing me to not get away with such a great opportunity now after flock 2019 i also mentored at google code n i'm just surprised that 
me picturing myself as a mentor who could have thought that like i always wanted to teach but i never thought that i could be a mentor that i learned enough to be qualified as a mentor but that happened so smoothly that i am still in awe i got very quite positive feedback from the students that were in gci and i guess that was a turning point in my life where i knew that i could do something i could teach as well then that was a part where i also <coughs> sorry sorry for the disturbance uh i could contribute to gci after mentoring at gci i hosted a fedora women's day in my college for the very first time in bhubaneswar and guess what around 50 plus people showed up it was like such a surprise i did not like think in my dream that a such huge crowd would be so much interested in learning about fedora and open source overall and also thanks for the you know chips and uh, it is that actually kind of lured them to come into fedora women's day so cheers to fedora for sponsoring that event as well so after uh, uh, fedora women's day 2000 at 2029 i would be sure it was such a uh, huge event i also became a part of different uh, different sections of fedora mostly fedora di and fedora commons these were some of the you know i'd say uh, like major chunks where i think that i have contributed to the community but i guess yeah this is it then during my journey did i face any challenges now uh, that's quite a point that okay i sure have uh faced some challenges because you know what a journey without some challenges but uh just me wanted to make sure that all of those challenges were not from their side it was purely circumstantial and personal so i told you that when i got uh, outreach internship uh that was a pure like surprise for me but at that time i was in surprise too not because of outreach but because of its devastating condition in my state at that time during uh june uh, during march april around my state got struck by the worst cyclone in the history of odisha which was funny like when the uh, when the results came out i did not go i did not search that from my mobile phone because i did not have uh, at that point of time any internet connection all of the entire city was in wreck we had hardly have any basic facilities available to us we had no water we had no electricity our house was already in a broke condition and i can't imagine that how i was able to get back but it was a very bad a uh, very bad past memory uh but with all the support and love of mentors uh, i was able to get back on the feet and started contributing like around the first week of outreach uh, everything got back to normal like my city kind of uh, you know recovered from the devastating damage that the cyclone has caused and things were getting back normal not even this like not only cyclone fani uh, had a very uh, impact on me at that point of time i was also not much familiar with the stack that i was contributing to so during my internship all i have to all i have to learn and implement learn and implement so both of them were quite hand in hand so you know for a professional it would have been an easier job for for but for me as a learner it was quite a heavy task most of these times i'll be pinging justin at all at very odd times and he will be so much supportive i can't like see how much he had helped me through the entire journey also yona and alberto they're so supportive when i was in bad situations when i was struggling through funny etc also in addition to this nerve wracking 
damages, no breaking stuff that happened to me at that time. I guess I was having this imposter syndrome. When I went to flock, I was so quite intimidated by all of the fellow people, those who were around me. Every time I had in my mind was that, you know, I'm not quite good enough for this. Uh, am I like, I have this self doubts that, okay, am I fitting into the situation? Okay, do I get like, am I worth this? You know, all these doubts. And for like the first day of flock was me asking this question in my mind. But after I interacted to my mentors, they were like, you know, that happens. You know, that happens to every learner or starter who gets here, but you will get a hang of it. And you know, with all those love, support, and uh, encouragement, I was able to give my first talk. My first talk in an international trip, that too in Budapest. <laughs> I guess that seems a joke for me, but but trust me, it was like, I can't even share the experience, you know, I am quite short of words to express what I felt at that time. Okay, so that's me blabbering a lot and going out of context, which I don't meant to. Okay, let's come to the slide presentation. So this is uh, what are the challenges that I fa faced during my internship and overall my Fedora journey. Now I have my takeaways as well. Uh, now the takeaways are huge and I thought like a single slide could not encounter all of this. So I had to, so I thought I should uh, classify them into broader concepts. So these are as here, as here. I had the best learning experience and the best internship ever. Trust me, I did not do any internship before Outreachy, so I had uh, no idea that what goes inside working in a team, uh, what are weekly calls, how to cope up in a team, how uh, you know, uh, get track of what I have done because there are two people that were working on the same project, how to work with merge conflicts, what was Git. Like, I knew some idea about Git, but you know, but the total merge or solving merge conflicts and uh, other things were quite hectic at that time. But I learned a lot, trust me. I, I couldn't imagine myself learning all those things if I wouldn't have gotten an outreachy and had that amazing experience back then. Second, and most important one, supporting in a friendly community. You know, I would not say it's community. It's more of a family. Uh, anytime I would be having any trouble, you know, in my personal life or in my professional life or need any reference or any help, I, I can freely ping any of my me mentors. Uh, they are so much supportive. They are so much open. They give so much inside feedbacks that I don't think anyone who has been a mentor can be so friendly to a person. So I'm quite grateful for having a great community and a family. Third one and most important one. It's the flaw 2019. Oh my God, I can't share the experience. Okay, I have already talked a lot. I'll not uh, expand it more. I'll just show you some of my best pictures of that time. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll stop reminiscing about the past and I'll just uh, end my slide. So thank you everyone for having me. Feel free to contact me. You can tag me in Twitter by Freaky Motive, a weird name. Just ignore the part. You can uh, mail me and say hi or whatever you want at alishabapunadirafedoraproject.org. If you want to have a deeper insight of what are, what did I do in my internship, what was my journey, how was the FWD 2019 I organized, you can get all those inside descriptions in my blogs that is present under author Alicia Papun. Thank you, everyone. Wow, that was amazing. Um, how's my audio right now? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fine, Mary. Okay, that was amazing. I had no idea that you were experiencing all of that. Um, Sorry, Mary, I am 
uh, witnessing some uh, glitch, I guess. Your voice is actually not clear. Uh, could you check that? Okay, how about now? Yeah, better? yeah, it's, it's better. OK. Um, <clears throat> I had no idea you were going through that at the time of your your outreach internship. And I think it's just a testament to like knowing, like we don't know what other people are going up through in life ever. Yeah. And that is why it's so important to, be, to treat people with kindness and empathy. Um, but I'm impressed with the strength that you had to say, yeah, I'm going to keep doing this internship, even though things are really like I have no electricity. <laughs> yeah. I have, you know, like, um, and you were really, you know, kind of getting to the basics of survival with your family. You know, all those That's 15 days that I had cut out electricity, we were spending our nights mm -hmm. in open. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's that's a crazy experience. I think it made you stronger. It definitely did. <laughs> um, so wait. I am not seeing any questions in the chat right now, um, but I was curious. Like you mentioned, that your intern, your universities weren't supportive of internships, yeah. and I was just curious. Like, what was the reasoning for that? I guess they prioritize attendance over having a industry experience. I guess you know, if they will allow three months internship people will be missing classes, which actually they don't want. That's why they ensure that no one gets a legal sign written by uh, written by the college that you are allowed it to have three months of internship. And most of the industry will want that. That's why that's a break, like, you know, uh, important phase, important part, which led us not to have a real life experience before landing in one. That's that's an interesting take, a full interesting philosophy on it. Okay, well, I'm glad that you, you know, you had the wherewithal to branch out, um, and 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 look for that for yourself. Um, shoot, I had another question. What was it? Oh, what is, what is the state of happiness packets today? Well, actually, I'm not quite touch and happiness packet, but uh, I guess. Uh, I I might have some uh, pending task, I guess, because I was so caught up in different like university. I just recently graduated and then I got this job, which I am currently working into. But um, it is deployed in, uh, it is not actually deployed, but it, uh, it was meant to deploy in mini shift. I guess the deployment is something that we are looking but uh, it's quite maintained apart from that. Can you give us just a brief overview of happiness packets? Because I know that there's people here who don't know what it is. Yeah. So happiness packet as a project, it's quite similar to the happiness packet laid by uh, another organization where actually uh, we speak and uh, appreciate others. You know, many times in our uh, community or in our work culture, we came across people who we want to openly praise for, but uh, we don't know, uh, we are not quite comfortable in saying that face to face. Uh, only we have is that maybe some information like their email IDs. So it's kind of a way where we can openly speak out and say praise, say good things, you know, all the positive things to a person through email. We can be anonymous, we can be we can show ourselves like through the email ID. It's a great, you know, platform where we can spread positivity in short. Okay, we have a question from the chat. What advice would you give to your past self before you started your open source journey? Don't be so nervous, man. You you are worth it and you know even if there will be so many difficulties, you will get through it. And um, you know, you have so many people out there which you can seek help from, and there is no need of having imposter syndrome because they are quite familiar with it. So just be there, just seek help if you need, don't shy out, and stay positive. 
that is awesome advice. I'm just going to say that for anyone, any time, any place. <laughs> um, so thank you for giving that that pearl of wisdom. Um, I just wanted to ask, what, where are you? You mentioned you're starting a job. And I'm curious, is it in tech? And um, what is that job, if you want to share a little bit with us? So I am currently uh, a developer associate at Accenture. So I'll be joining them. Like if pandemic would not have happened, I could have joined like two to three months back. But the joining is happening kind of late. So I joined a few days back. Uh, I am in a developer position. So I'll be undergoing some training where I will be assigned different projects. I'm not quite sure which area they I might land into because it de also depends on the test that I'll give in a few days after. But uh, I guess uh, there are a lot of opportunities waiting for me. Thanks, Brad. Um, congratulations. Thank and you. With you luck in the new job and just know that it takes six months <laughs> <laughs> or so to really, really get a grasp on things. I know, you know, when I've started new jobs in the first month or two, you know, you have those moments where you're like, eh, what did I get myself into? <laughs> um, but I know you have a strong a belief in yourself that is very well founded. Um, but still, best of luck. And I don't have any more questions. I don't see any more in the chat for now. So um, I don't know if you've been watching the other sessions, but we're, we have a script that if you would like to read would be sure. awesome. Um, maybe you could stop sharing your screen just so that the video sure. takes up a little bit more of the screen and then I'll copy and paste the text in. Yeah. So the idea here is that it's similar to the Budapest video. The first part is in your native tongue or whatever, whichever language you would like. And then um, the second part is in English. So I'm gonna mute myself, go ahead, do as many takes or whatever you know, need to do. Sure. So I guess I'll be going with Hindi. Uh, okay, let me see. Namaskar, my name is Alisha Mahanti. I am from Bhubaneswar, Odisha. I am from Odisha. मैं ओडिया हिंदी इंग्लिश बोलती हूँ। सो हम विभिन्न विभिन्न देशों से हैं, हम अलग-अलग भाषाएं बोलते हैं, हम हमारे संस्कृति अलग-अलग हैं, लेकिन फेडोरा हमें एक करता है। हम फेडोरा हैं, we are fedora। म्यूट म्यूट How about now? Yeah. Okay, better. Um, so, <laughs> Nasir is asking me to do in Odia. You know, okay. That's so, the, so, the second part, I was actually hoping for in English. Sure, sure. Okay. So, so, the part that's specific to you, like the hi, my name is, and this is about me. And then starting at we are from different countries, okay. that would be in English. All right. So you want to try once more? Okay, so you mean to say that I'll speak all of this in English, right? No. So you'll say, hi, my name is Alicia. I am from India. Th that part in your native tongue. Okay, okay. I got that. So you remember the Budapest video we made? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so the first part's about you in your native tongue. And then the second part will be in English. And okay. we'll mash. we're going to mash them all up together. So... I'm going to mute myself again. Sure. Namaskar. My name is Alisha Mahanti. I am from Bhubaneswar, Odisha. I am in Hindi, Odia, Angrezi. So we are from different countries. We speak different languages. We are of different cultures. But Fedora unites us with open source. We are Fedora. That was awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, these sessions bring me um, a ton of happiness to, to, to share, you know, stories like these and continue to build our support network um, of women and non-binary folks in Fedora. It's definitely really important. Um, so Mary, I just wanted to ask, 
that okay. how's your cat <laughs> you know i have, i have seen yeah her. she's doing okay um she has good days and bad days she's 16 and she's has kidney disease and she has hyperthyroid oh. thyroidism so honestly i just spoil her <laughs> Day and night, I have beds for her in every room. I give her my food. I just give her all the attention I can and uh, try to make her comfy. So she's okay. Uh, if she were a dog, I could call her over and she'd, you know, say hi. But she's not going to come over for us. <laughs> maybe she'll say hi a little bit later on. Or maybe she'll come to the social. Sure. <laughs> Looking forward for it. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I'll What's tell her name, by the way? Miko. Oh, that's a sweet name. Miko. Miko. Yeah, she's my sweetheart. Her and I live together, and it's just me and her. We've been, like, besties during uh, COVID times, you know? It's been such a different experience to live alone um, when most of the people I talk to are like, I'm cramped up with my entire family. <laughs> or uh, I'm cramped up with my kids, and they're driving me insane. I'm like, I'm just all alone. <laughs> What's going on, guys? You know, it's, yeah. it's a different, it's a different thing. Um, but anyway, thanks again for coming and sharing your inspiring story. Um, I will hopefully see you around later sure. today, and sure. I'll jump off. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>